hello friends welcome to cyas how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so currently we have 10 series that focus on your prelims and uh, one series that is mains oriented so friends what we do in these series we daily we daily cover two topics and uh, of two topics we daily cover 15 10 to 15 mcqs and in this manner total 20 to 30 mcqs are covered combined of two lectures so in this way we have identified 10 uh, 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 prelims oriented topics which we will we will be covering till prelims that is till 31st may so why the date chosen has been 31st may because on 2nd june is it prelims of upsc csc 2019 and we will end this it is only one day before your prelims exam so let's start our, our today's discussion so today is uh, today uh, today in this video we will be talking about the indian polity and the lecture number is 16 uh, sorry 7th already 6 lectures have been covered so let's start our discussion first is consider the following statements about the office of upsc chairman so first is she is, uh, she is appointed, appointed by dopt on the recommendation of upsc members second the package chairman must have a fixed term post uh, fixed term post post appointment even if retirement is due third she can be removed by a resolution passed by majority of upsc members and agreed by two by the union cabinet fourth a upsc member can be reappointed as the chairman so let me tell you friends that all these uh, the first three statements are wrong but only four statement is correct so the answer is b that is fourth only she is not appointed by the department of uh, personal and training it, actually it is, she is appointed by 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 this uh, by the president of india on the recommendation of the uh, on the uh, of the council of ministers and also chairman doesn't have a fixed tenure let me tell you it has a tenure of 6 year or 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 until the age of 65 years so whichever is earlier so it is not uh, it is not sure that uh, that he will remain there in 6 for 6 years uh, it is it is not fixed if it's uh, if his or her retirement age comes earlier uh, before the expiry of expiry of 6 years then he will be leaving the office so third is also incorrect she cannot be removed by the resolution passed by majority of upsc members but can be removed by 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 if the, on the recommendations of inquiry committee set up by the supreme court for the for the for the same for, for the purpose of the same so the correct answer is false only so the solution is b so here is the justification already i have provided you in detail explanation so let's move on to the second question second question is in india which of these matters come under the state list of the 11 schedule to the indian constitution a education b for us c irrigation bank d banking so let me tell you friends that in india in the seventh schedule we have three lists that is union list state list and concurrent lists union list is that li is, is that list in which the subjects that are mentioned they are governed and they, the laws on them they are ma they are made by union uh, union government and uh, in state list comes the subjects uh, which are managed by the state government and uh, this concurrent list in which both the subjects uh, or those subjects come which can be managed by both union government and uh, state government so let me tell you friends that education comes under this uh, 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 st uh, this concurrent list and for us come under union list uh, sorry concurrent list and uh, similarly banking comes under national list but let me tell you friends uh, irrigation comes under this uh, state list and uh, including agriculture so uh, health uh, uh, the solution is c uh, so defense of the country foreign affairs banking communications and currency can come under union list but state list includes police trade commerce agriculture and irrigation and similarly concurrent list includes education for us trade unions marriage adoption and succession so let's move on to the third question third question is which of the following is the key features of federalism first different types of government govern the same citizens but each tier has its own jurisdiction second each tier of government must draw all its financial resources independent of other tier third is the existence of authority of each tier of government is generally is, uh, is uh, of government generally is constitutionally granted for division of powers between state units cannot be arbitrarily uh, manipulated by any uh, one tier of uh, government alone so let me tell you friends that here only the second statement is incorrect because uh, each uh, tier of government doesn't uh, draw of its financial resources independent of the each other for example in india there is federal system of government but the financial resources of the state government are 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 are, are provided by the finance commission which which decides the which which which, which provides recommendation relating to sharing of distribution of revenues between the union government and state government so only second is correct rest of the statements uh, sorry second is incorrect rest of the statements are correct so the solution is one three and four only so the solution is b so this is about your solution so already i have provided you in detail explanation let's move on to the fourth question 
Fourth question is if state laws on subjects mentioned in, mentioned in the concurrent li list conflict with the central law, which of these follows? So here we have been asked that friends, uh, as I have told you earlier, that there is a concurrent list uh, uh, in which both the state government and uh, central government can intervene or, or can make laws. But in case if they, if in in that list uh, both the central law and uh, list made, made is made, or for that matter, if uh, a state law is also made, then in case if central law and state law are in conflict, then then central law shall prevail so the answer is b the central law prevails over the state law so here is solution b so already i provided the explanation let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is the lieutenant governor of delhi is appointed by uh, a the president on the advice of minister of home affairs b the legislative assembly of delhi on the advice of ut of council of ministers c chief minister of delhi after consulting a collegium consisting of chief justice of the delhi high court and other high, other senior judges d the delhi development authority after obtaining consent from the president of india so let me tell you friends that this lieutenant governor of, governor of Delhi is appointed by the president on the recommendations of by consulting with the Ministry of Home Affairs and with vice of the Ministry of Home Affairs. So the answer is A. So here is the in detail explanation. So it in the uh, due to the strategic important of importance of New Delhi, the lieutenant governor has additional powers on on subjects like land, law, and order. Extra. So also uh, in case of differ difference of opinion between assembly and lieutenant governor, the matter is referred to president. Let's move on to the next question. Sixth question consists of the following statements about the local self-government in India. First, it is it is constitutionally mandatory to hold regular elections to the local government bodies. Second, an independent institution, state election commission has been created in each state to conduct panchayat and municipal elections. So we have to choose the correct answer. So let me tell you friends that both of these statements is correct. It is constitutionally mandatory to hold regular elections to the local government bodies and also independent institution that is like state election commission conducts elections for the purpose of panchayats and municipalities so the solution is c that is both one and two are correct so seats are reserved for the scs sts obcs and uh, women one third of the seats are reserved for the women and uh, this is about your six questions so let's move on to the seventh question seventh question is the prime minister's high level committee popularly known as such a committee was set up with the focus on a curbing violence and discriminating against the list b uh, blockades in social and economic uh, development of women in India and means to empower them. C. Social, economic and educational conditions of the Muslim community of India. D. Creating social harmony between the people of Northeastern India and rest of India. So here we have been asked that which of the following uh, is, uh, is the correct ex uh, kind of uh, description of the Sachar Committee. So let me tell you friends that Sachar Committee was uh, was set up to, to look, look into the social, economic and educational conditions of the Muslim. So the answer is C. So here is the uh, in detail explanation. So such a committee was basically headed by the uh, former High Court Chief Justice, that is Rajinder Sachar, and had its uh, had six members. So it's it 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 said that 14 uh, that Muslims constitute 14 percent of the India's population, but they ha their share in bureaucracy is only 2.5 percent. And also they concluded that the conditions facing the Indian Mus Muslims are worse even than the scheduled caste and scheduled scheduled tribes. So in November 2013, 13 government contended this before the Supreme Court that this Rajinder Sacha committee committee was unconstitutional because it only only uh, sought to help Muslims because with, uh, uh, disregarding other religious minorities. So let's move on to the eighth question. Eighth question is which of the following are legally mandatory for the political parties in or political candidates fighting elections in India? One, uh, giving a certain percentage of election tickets to women candidates. Second, a record of the adherence of a political party. To its own constitution. Third, submit an affidavit giving the details of his property, property and cr uh, criminal cases pending against him to the concerned authority. So, which of the following is legally uh, mandatory? So, let me tell you, friends, that only one statement is le legally mandatory, and that is third statement. That is, submit the candidate has to submit the uh, uh, affidavit giving details of his property as well as uh, the criminal case is pending against him to the concerned authority. So, the statement correct is th uh, 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 is uh, third. So, the answer is C. That is third only. So, here is. The the explanation so i have already told you the in detail explanation so let's move on to the ninth question ninth question is consider the following about the famous objective resolution proposed by jawala nehru first it was proposed to the constituent assembly of india before the enactment of constitution second it constitution it, it contained clear provisions to abolish privy parts from india third it became uh, the basis for adding the word socialist and circular to the constitution in 1950 so we have to choose the correct answer so let me tell you friends that the objective resolution was moved by was proposed by jawala nehru and it basically it was basically to provide a kind of uh, uh, 
kind of insight into the into the purpose of the constituent assembly which was to make the which was to make the constitution of india so friends let me tell you that only first is correct because second is incorrect because there was no such provision of privy purse and also friends uh, these two words regard in third statement that the, that is socialist and secular they are added by the they were added by the 42nd amendment so there is no relation between object, objective resolution and these two words so basically objective resolution was was to kind of give was to was to give insight into the uh, into the broad framework of the constitution in which it would be framed so only one statement is correct first only so the answer is a that is one only so here is explanation in detail explanation so let's move on to the last question of the day it's uh, the 10th question 10th question is considered the following about the legislature of delhi first lieutenant governor shall from time to time summon the legislative assembly to meet at such time and place as he thinks fit second only president is authorized to prorogue or dissolve the delhi assembly let me tell you friends that the first is correct and the second is incorrect the president is not uh, or not uh, is not the only person authorized to prorogue or dissolve the delhi assembly so the answer is a that is one only so solution is a so a bill or amendment shall be introduced uh, into or moved in the legislative assembly except on the recommendation and the koi uh, is is simple similar there is simple there is a simple explanation that no bill or amendment shall shall be introduced into or moved by the legislative assembly of delhi without the recommendation or uh, of of uh, lieutenant governor so let's uh, move on to the the last question so this is the last question as i have told you the answer is a so friends this is all about today's uh, lecture about the indian polity if you like the uh, uh, mcqs if you like the lecture then please do like it and do share it with your friends and also friends uh, do ensure that you subscribe to our channel that is achieve ies and also do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important not notifications relating to upsc csc 2019 so friends lastly let me tell you that if you want to get the pdf so these daily discussions then you can contact us at this number or this this email id the number is given before you that is 8968426481 and the email id is achieve ies 21@gmail.com so friends why these pdfs are important because at the end of the day you will not be able to see 50 to 20 minute long video and after, uh, and obviously you will not be able to revise through standard books because it will be an utter wastage of time because at that time you will have to revise multiple topics multiple times so these pdfs are designed in a manner that they they provide uh, they provide you in detail explanation and also they help you in covering your basic concepts and important concepts in a comprehensive manner and in an, in, in an interesting way with minimum loss of time because standard books or for that matter reading ncert is when the exam is near it will be an utter waste of time so that's where these pdfs are important so in, if you wish to subscribe to these pdfs then you can contact us at this email id or at this number so obviously there will be a certain cost uh, that that uh, that will be charged to you uh, uh, that will be charged for providing you the pdf so that is that cost is only for our, our sustainability purposes so they, uh, they, they that that cost is not that much so you can contact us at this email id or at this contact number if you wish to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs so thank you friends have uh, Thank you very much. Have a nice day.